Hi, my name is Ian Taylor, and I'm Director of Product Innovation here at BD Life Science Informatics. And today I have the great pleasure of walking you through the different preference options for Flojo. So as you can see here, I've got an open Flojo workspace. And if we want to visit the preferences, you can see there's a preference icon in the top right hand corner of the workspace. And that's going to be visible in almost any of the different platforms that you visit in Flojo, including the layout editor and the table editor. It's also available here within the Flojo tab of the Flojo workspace. Before I get started too far down this demo, I'm actually gonna add some data so that we can see some of the changes that I make to the preferences take effect live within that particular data file. So I'm picking a very specific data file here of interest. And you can see right now that file is named by well ID, but the very first thing I'm gonna change is the workspace naming preferences to change the name of the file that's shown by default within Flojo workspaces. So again, to access the preferences, always just click on the little red heart icon. The preferences is the heart of Flojo after all. And uh, when you get into the preferences, you'll see there's kind of generic sections set up uh, on a platform by platform basis within Flojo. I'm not gonna walk you through each of these platforms, but just recognize that for any area of Flojo that you'd like to make some customization, there's probably a preference that's in some way associated with that. So starting with the top left, if I click on the workspace section there, you'll see the very first section of that workspace preferences is associated with sample naming. Currently, the sample name is set to a keyword combination. And so we can use any keyword we like by choosing from this drop-down menu in order to name samples. And if I add a new keyword, you'll see that it just tacks date onto the end of tube name. And now if I click OK, we should see that the date has been added to the end of this FCS file. If I'd like to use the default, I can go ahead and choose FCS default, which is dollar sign FIL, uh, or the file naming keyword that's associated with every FCS file that's written. Otherwise, you can use short file name. Short file name is probably the most commonly used file name that we see researchers wanting to access. That's going to be the name of the file as you see it on disk. So it's not a keyword of the FCS file so much as the name of the FCS file that you would see inside a file folder in your finder or in a, in a file explorer window. Okay, so if I click OK, that's gonna immediately change to show me the same file name that I saw when I was searching for the file in Add Samples. And so uh, for a lot of researchers, that's just a more intuitive name. But if there's a particular keyword that you'd like to use instead, then just recognize that you have that option. There's also a font section in the preferences where you can change the different default font options. Uh, I like to use Verdana everywhere, and I find that the ones that are most impactful are the ones for the layout editor. Because we're doing so much of the work that's gonna be visual in the layout editor, it can be really nice to have your own custom font settings and text options set within this preferences, and that way every time you open up a new workspace and start adding graphs to the layout, they're gonna look exactly as you expect them to. Another really handy one is gates. Um, there are all sorts of handy little uh, things you can adjust within the gates, but the main one that I'm adjusting is actually just the color of my gates. I like to see them in the kind of old school style pink. I think that pink contrasts really nicely on most graph types and particularly on pseudo color. It's, it's easy to see my gates because they're all in that kind of a, a pink hue. Uh, licensing is also particularly useful, especially if you're having trouble with licensing. Looking here will give you some immediate clues as to how, uh, how you're licensing Flojo. Here you can see I'm using the Flojo portal uh, preferred account here. And uh, if I was using a serial number, I would have a serial number entered here and some status message about how that serial number is working for me currently. You can also do things like adjust your proxy settings. If you're at an institution with pretty high security, this is a really good one to check out and maybe with an IT guy handy. You can also adjust permissions so that uh, if certain people in the lab are not allowed to do certain actions in a Flojo workspace, you can adjust their permissions down at the bottom. We're seeing that used far less often. Um, one more that's a little bit handy for, for folks that are using older versions of Flojo. If you want Flojo to stop nagging you about newer versions, you can always uncheck these boxes to check for new versions and check for beta versions. Graphs is another one that I find is really indispensable. In here, you can adjust things like whether to show the dollar sign PNS or the stain or short name keyword within the graph windows in Flojo. In the layout annotation section, you can do things like customize the palette that's gonna be used for each new color. And this is actually used in a few different spots in Flojo. But the main one is for overlays within the layout editor. So that's really, really handy. Um, you can also adjust the annotations that are shown. So I particularly like to see either the sample name or population name. I just have it set to automatically show both. And then I'll usually remove one or the other, depending on what sort of an analysis I'm performing. 
You can also turn the annotations off entirely. The annotations is referring to the small box that appears below a graph window when you add a graph to the layout editor in Flojo's layout editor. So lots of different customizations available for the layout. And uh, I think that's one where people really appreciate the ability to set defaults really, really nicely. Another one that I really like to show people is the cytometers section of the preferences. So in cytometers, you'll get a list of every single cytometer type that you've ever loaded based on dollar sign CYT keyword value within the preferences. And then you can actually make default changes to the preferences for loading those types of files. So for any of these, if I picked one, maybe for fact symphony, I want to change the range. I can uncheck default linear scaling. Now it will say custom linear scaling, and I can enter a custom linear scale here, and that will utilize, now Flojo will utilize that scaling anytime that it sees a linearly scaled parameter coming from the diva associated with a fact symphony A5. And you can see I've got a lot of different uh, cytometer preferences set there. This will get reset if you reset your preferences. And it will just contain a list of all the cytometers that you've loaded personally on your machine wherever you've got Flojo installed. So don't expect to see a long list like this. Most people have maybe four or five different cytometers, and each one might have a different dollar sign CYT keyword name associated with that cytometer. So that can be a really, really handy thing to do. Um, there are other ways to change the preferences, but I'll leave that for another video. For now, I'll just Jump back to the preferences to remind you again what's available here. Lots of different options for all different kinds of settings that you might want to adjust and in a really helpful spot to visit in Flojo right off the bat. I look forward to seeing you in the next one. And until then, uh, thanks for